Okay, let's uh, talk about the glenohumeral joint, specifically the intertubicular groove muscles that act on the glenohumeral joint. So we'll describe the inner group describe the intertubercular groove muscles, including actions and innervation. So, intertubercular groove muscles. There's the pectoralis major, teres major, and latissimus dorsi, or as we affectionately call them, two majors and a miss. It's actually two majors and a must, but that doesn't quite work. So, two majors and a miss. So, let's take the pectoralis major, the first of our majors. It arises from the medial third of the clavicle as well as all the way down the sternum and a little bit on the costal cartilage. And then these bellies all insert on the lateral uh, lip of that intertubercular groove. So, when this muscle contracts, it will help with horizontal adduction of the glenohumeral joint. Um, adduction or horizontal adduction. Think bench press, think push ups. Um, the teres major gets its name because it's the big tubular muscle, comes from the inferior uh, margin of the scapula, and then as it courses, it goes in front of inserting into the intertubercular groove. And I'm not going to talk more about the latissimus, I mean the teres major, because the latissimus dorsi does most of the actions anyways. It comes from T7 all the way down to the sacrum, and then inserts on the intertubercular groove. If we look from an anterior view, there's the muscle starts posterior and inserts anterior on the intertubercular groove. Now, here we have uh, an, a, the action of latissimus dorsi. So there's the scapula, and then there's the humerus. And if we outline the latissimus dorsi, when the muscle contracts, it will pull the humerus down in this fashion, as in doing uh, these pull-ups. This is adduction of the glenohumeral joint. Then we also is going to help do... I think that's kind of funny, that picture. Mm -hmm. And then here we've got uh, extension of that glenohumeral joint from this position to this position. There's extension as well that the latissimus dorsi will do as in like rowing a boat. So lats will adduct and extend the glenohumeral joint. Now, I'm going to skip innervation of the pec major and the teres major, though you'll need to know it from drawing out the brachial plexus. I'll just show the latissimus dorsi. This is a more clinically relevant muscle in the sense it arises from C6, C7, and C8 spinal nerve levels, and the motor neurons are going to then contribute onto all the trunks, the, anterior, the upper, middle, and lower trunks, and then go into the posterior division, um, into the posterior cord. And so the middle, it's sometimes called the middle subscapular because it comes between the upper and lower subscapular, but it's the thoracodorsal nerve. So there we have all those levels coming down, and it provides innervation of latissimus dorsi from C6, C7, and C8. All right, so our intertubercular groove muscles, pectoralis major, teres major, latissimus dorsi, are two majors and a miss, all insert on the intertubercular groove.